I shot all this footage in 120 frames per second and I made it look like it was coming out of a phantom super slow motion camera and let me show you how I did it. Full credit where credit is due though, I did not learn this effect by myself and I can't claim it. I actually learned it and saw it first through Patty Cartwright who is very much pioneered this style of editing and this kind of slow motion aesthetic. So go check his stuff out, go give him some love. He's a very, very talented creator who deserves all the credit in the world for popularizing this very cool effect. A few things before we get started, you're gonna need a clip that was shot at 120 frames per second or higher and number two, you're gonna have to to conform that clip to a 23.976 frames per second timeline to get it slowed down as much as possible and ideally when you've shot this clip you shot it with a high shutter speed in order to eliminate as much motion blur as possible and finally you will need the full paid version of davinci resolve in order to actually pull off this effect with the software within it unfortunately for my premiere pro final cut and after effects users there's no workaround for this as of right now maybe there will be in the future but right now you do need the full version of davinci resolve in order to achieve this effect once you're in DaVinci Resolve and you've conformed your clip to the 23.976 frames per second, you will then take it, drop it in the timeline and slow it down to 50% of its original speed. You're then going to go to your video effects and under retime and scaling, you're going to go to retime process and select optical flow and then under motion estimation, and this is the most important setting, you're going to change it to AI speed warp better. And once you're done there, all you're going to do is go back to your timeline, right click your clip and hit render in place five minutes later. And then once that's done, you're gonna be able to replay your clip and you're actually gonna be able to see the effect take shape where your clip is significantly slower from the original constraints of whatever frame rate you were shooting in before. Quick pause from today's video because I just wanna take a quick second to say thank you to all of you who are watching and engaged with my content over the last few years. Whether you've been subscribed, dropping comments, liking, or even just watching these videos, you have no idea how much I appreciate that and how much it's helped me progress and grow this channel to where it is today. And I really just want to say thank you for a quick second because I would not be here where I am today making YouTube videos on the side of what I'm doing if it wasn't for your incredible support over the last little while. You guys know very well that I'm here because I want to help you guys grow and break into this industry in the same way I did. And I know that is a pretty big task and something that can be really intimidating from figuring out how to shoot sports, nailing the right look, or even breaking into the right rooms and learning how to network with the right people to get opportunities. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but I'm here to try and provide value and help you guys along the way. And there's one other way that you guys can support me and that I can help you guys that I want to talk about really quickly. If you've ever gotten value from the content I'm posting here on YouTube and you want to support me a little bit more directly and also get more bang for your buck on how much you can invest in this industry, I actually have a full digital storefront website with a ton of assets and resources to help people just like you guys who are actively working or trying to break into the sports creative industry. On my digital storefront, there are a ton of products that I've been curating over the last few years in order to help you guys create content better and faster than ever before, like the LUTs I use to color grade my videos, the Lightroom presets I use to edit all of my photos, and even strategy guides and email templates for how to reach out to sports teams and get opportunities faster. No pressure whatsoever, but if that sounds helpful or interesting to any of you, just know the link will be down in the description below for you guys to check out my digital storefront and all those assets I previously mentioned. And even if you don't end up buying anything, your support by just watching today's video means the world to me. Anyways, that's it for me. Let's get back to today's video. Now, after it's rendered in place, you're going to notice your clip is slowed down and you're essentially done the effect. But what you can do is actually repeat these steps three or four more times. At least that's what I like doing to get to the speed that I think the clip looks best at. But I will say if you are going to do it several times, you will have to repeat all these steps again from slowing down your clip again, 50% more going and turning on optical flow and AI speed warp better and letting it render in place again. And as a caveat, every time you slow it down and you hit render in place, it will take longer and longer each time to render i think by the third or fourth render i do it usually takes about 30 to 40 minutes so just keep in mind this is not an effect that will be done very quickly but if you're patient with it i promise you the results are totally worth it one more piece of advice for people who are trying out this effect, this won't work for every single clip and it's more efficient based on the clips that you choose. So if you have a clip with one subject and a very easy, simple background, that's gonna work the best. You can do it with multiple subjects as you saw in the video that I posted. I could have at least two or three subjects in frame and it did a pretty decent job, but the more subjects you have in frame, the more complicated movements and the more complicated that the actual background of your video is, it's gonna take longer to render and sometimes the render can get a little funky and glitchy. So you will have to keep that in mind to be very selective as to the clips you use when you want to do this kind of phantom cam high speed slowdown effect. 
Anyways, that is how you recreate this slow motion look where you can make your 120 frames per second footage look like it was shot on a high speed camera when in reality, you probably just shot it on your Sony FX3 or similar. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.